Hi, Angie Taylor here, and in this movie, I'm going to show you a technique for taking some hand-drawn text like this, converting it to vectors, and animating it in After Effects. Now, I want you to create your own hand-drawn text to use here. And when you've drawn your own hand-drawn text, open it up here in Photoshop. And I'm going to show you, first of all, how to brighten this up and make it ready for tracing in Illustrator. So we're going to go to the Image menu and we're going to go into Adjustments, Levels. Now you can do this as an adjustment layer if you prefer. So you can go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Levels, and that makes it non-destructive. We'll click OK and then we can adjust the levels by pulling the black point and the white point in to the edges of the histogram. But if you want to make sure that the areas in here are completely white, click on the eyedropper tool and just click on an area that you want to be white. You can also do the same for black if you need to. That's fine for us, so we're going to close that. I've already saved a version of this, so I'm going to jump very quickly over to Illustrator. So I've already hit Commando to open the file and chosen it, and we're in the Photoshop Import Options, where I can either convert the layers to objects, or we'll choose to flatten the layers to single image. So I click OK, and that brings the file into Illustrator. Now we can use Command minus or Control minus on PC to zoom out so we can see the full image, or we can double click the hand tool just to optimize our workspace. Now, once I have it in there, I'm going to select it and I'm going to live trace it. But instead of just clicking on live trace, I want to click on this wing menu here and go to the tracing options. Now it's warning me that this is a large image. I'm going to say that's okay. I want to continue. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose black and white, but we only really want two colors. So what we're going to do is click on preview and see where the threshold is at the moment. And the threshold is the midway between black and white. And it defaults to halfway between the values of zero and 255, which is 128. If you wanted to include more areas into the black areas, you can increase the value. If you want to decrease the value, you can push more areas to white. So you see that increasing makes more areas black, decreasing makes more areas white. But actually, funnily enough, 128 actually worked here, probably because I'd already used the levels effect to make sure all the areas were white that I wanted. So once you have it how you want it, you can just click on trace. A couple of things to be aware of. If we say strokes and take off fills, now you'll notice it takes a little bit of time to update now. Then instead of having filled lines for our text, we'll have strokes. And that's really good for working in After Effects because rather than having you know a filled line, you want to have just a continuous stroke so that it'll work as a mask. There are some areas here that haven't become continuous strokes. So what you want to do is adjust the stroke weight value if I bring that down to a value of zero or thereabouts, the lowest value I can choose from that slider value, you'll see it update so that all of the paths are consisting of two strokes, which we don't want. So we know from that that we want a higher value. So we're going to try maybe a value of 17 to see if it just gets rid of those areas that were causing problems for us. Because all we want is one continuous stroke for each path. And that's looking fairly good. Uh, we may have to put that up to maybe 20. So let's go up to a value of 20. Now, while you're making adjustments, you're probably better to switch off the preview button. So as soon as this stops updating, switch off the preview button. And that allows you to adjust the values without it trying to update. Now I'm going to click on trace and that's going to trace my image for me. It takes a little bit of time to work that out. And there we have our trace text. If we expand that, you'll see we then get these lovely paths that we can then use in After Effects to animate. So what I'm going to do is copy and paste this into After Effects now. Now, a couple of things to be aware of. If you're copying and pasting from Illustrator and you want the masks into After Effects, go to your preferences in Illustrator and go to File Handling and Clipboard. And you need to make sure that Preserve Paths is selected. If you have that on, when you copy and paste, you can copy and paste the path from Illustrator and it's preserved and able to copy into After Effects. 
So once you have that, you can just go to Edit Copy, and then we're going to jump to After Effects. So let's quickly jump to After Effects. And in After Effects, I'm going to create a new composition, and I'm going to leave it at my default settings. And I'm going to create a new solid. Make sure it's the composition size and click OK. And now I'm going to paste my masks into that solid. And if I switch on the mask button, you should now see that my masks are pasted in there. Now, quite often the masks will be too big for your composition. And you can see that happening here. If I zoom out by hitting the comma key on the keyboard and the period key to zoom up, you can see that my masks are far too big for my comp. So what I recommend doing if that happens is select the layer, hit the M key to bring up all of the masks and you want to select them all. So hit the tilde key to expand the timeline and make sure that you select all of those masks and you'll see there are a lot of masks copied in there. So we have 173 masks. So once I have them all selected, I can hit Command T and that would be Control T on the PC. Again, use comma to zoom out. And now what I can do is use a free transform box just to resize that to fill my comp. And as I'm resizing, if I hold down shift and the command key or control key on Windows, I can constrain it around the center and make sure that it retains the correct aspect ratio. I'm not distorting it. So then we'll zoom up again using the period key on the number pad. And I think we're going to apply the stroke effect. So I'm going to apply the stroke effect, select that from here, and let's just drag and drop it onto our layer. OK, and say all masks. We'll also create a little bit of animation. So let's do our end point animation that we did earlier. So we'll drag that to about four seconds and then bring it down to zero at the end. And we're going to say paint on transparent, switch off our masks, and RAM preview that to see the hand-drawn text painted on over time. And again, there's various adjustments you can make there. We might want to put the stroke value up to a value of, say, 5. Maybe change the colour to a orange colour. And you can even do things like add glow effects and shadows and all sorts of nice things um, to this to really bring it to life. So there we have a glowing stroke animating our handwriting and hand drawings over time. And this piece of text design was by Wykit Khan, who was a student at my college at Sussex Downs when I taught there a couple of years ago. So thanks, Wykit, for letting me use your image. So that's a little bit about using a hand-drawn image, just optimising it in Photoshop, bringing it into Illustrator, live tracing it, copying and pasting the mask into After Effects and then using the glow effect and the stroke effect to animate it drawing over time.